Oh well, it happens. It happens. How's everyone doing, by the way? Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Games have been good so far. Had some great fun. It's interesting seeing the new meta, Primordials, plus uh, Primordials and Brawnies definitely seem to be jumping up in priority. Knights, still decent, but the new Primordial compositions are a very solid counter to it. We've seen a little bit of Elusive used twice. That seems to work reasonably. There was a chance there. Alrighty. The players are tired of waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Grand Finals. Zytrax, unfortunately, will be disqualified for lateness. It's unfortunate, but it happens. We're heading into the game, ladies and gentlemen. We are off and underway. We're starting off with Wanderers. Wanderers, yet to pick up his first unit, actually. Let's see what he goes for. Razor. Drow Ranger. Oh, he was AFK. Feels bad. Alrighty. Shifter running at the tiny at the start here. Sends with a number tiny. Ami with the Venomancer. Square with the Anti-Mage. Beal with the Axe. Babolica with the Bat Rider. And the bot that we don't care about. Wanderers, are you back yet? Come on, buddy. Come on, Wanderers, wake up. Oh, God, he's going to have RNG on the item as well. Feels bad. Oh, man. Okay, he bought an item. We good. I believe we good. And there we go. Here's the Razor. He's in. He's in there like swimwear. And two tinies. Feels good. Feels real good. That's great news. Primordials, primordials. Coming off straight away. Got another tiny on here as well. And an Ogre Magi. Choosing for the Ogre Magi instead of the Razor for these early game plays here. Anti-Mage Bounty Hunter with an Enchantress being picked up. Enchantress, uh, sorry, Venom has a Tusk coming in here for Ame, who has managed to pick himself up a Embarrassment of Riches. And Babalika looks like he's going to be building into Knights as we move on, as he has picked up a Troll. Not a Witch Doctor, the preferred Troll, but this is a reasonable carry over the Shadow Shaman, and it can be traded out a little bit later. But there is a Knight-based build where you do all in on the Trolls. You basically go four Knights instead of six, and go for Trolls as well. It gets you a level eight, uh, level eight Power Spike, and gets you that Troll Warlord, which can add a huge amount of DPS without having to rely on getting that leveled up Dragon Knight. Ogre Magi already coming out for Beal. For B, sorry. Nice little bit of extra DPS there. Wanderers sitting chill. Nice. Picks out a Puck. Partway towards the Mages, Primordial Mage Assassins. Shifter, big time contract on the line. Two Ogre Magi is at an Axe. He wants those kills on Axe, which is why it's wearing the big time contract here. Look at the bloodlust. Axe get the kills. Max picks up a couple last hits there. Three kills, and he swapped out some of his primordials for this. This might be the strategy he goes for. Alrighty. We're through all the PvE rounds. Let's see what everyone got here. We have a fall from Grace. Several embarrassment of riches. Nice and early. Couple but big time contracts here. One for Shifter and one for Sens. Shifter for the first time deviating from his primordial composition. Going for Warlock here. Sens picks up a Beastmaster, so could move into Brawnies a little bit later. Bloodseeker moves the axe away. Interesting. So Shifter choosing not to go to try and stack up that axe as fast as possible. Instead, running that Bloodseeker very early. Doesn't gain any benefit from picking up these early kills. He's gonna be moving in. I think he's gonna try and Bloodlust it. Gets it. The stuns. Cask denied. Now it's gonna be the stuns onto Ogre Magi. It tries to carry, but it cannot do so. Bamboozled by the Cask of Babalico, who did replace that Shadow Shaman in the end. Feels bad there. Balika sits on 100 health. Very split on his knights. Very strange. Of course, knights gain most value when they're next to each other, so keeping them this split is a very strange strategy. Potentially trying to avoid the multitude of razors that were on the board, and of course, a couple Beastmasters. Ami ringing out two Beastmasters already. Three kills on one, second one just arriving. Three kills on the Tusk as well. Big time contract traded. Onto the Beastmaster here, finally throwing that out. Looking to pick up some kills on that. Trades out the Bloodseekers as well. So the idea here is he's got a Warlock as well, so he's going all in for these Bloodbounds. 
And he sold his axe, though. Very strange. So he's not going for... Is he going for... He's going to be bought his axe back. Okay, there we go. So he's going in for a little bit of brawny blood bound here. Oh, man. Ac Beastmaster going to be taken out, though. The triple assassins of Square already online. And he has a timber saw. Square immediately going into the scrappy assassins combo. Very early to do so, but triple assassins this early is kind of devastating. Warlock traded out immediately for a level 2 tiny. Get that on the board. And there we go. Beastmaster placed on the corner to try and buy some more time there. Alrighty. Square looking pretty right now. Two timber saws already and a clockwork picked up. Spending all his money. But it's keeping him in the game. Primordials. Not the name of the game this time for Square. He's bringing out that scrappy inventor play. He does give up on his assassin bonus for this, but he will get it back very shortly. Let's see if this was worth. Running into Babolica. I mean, this is a level 2 scrappy bonus. 9 armor and 8 HP regen. Doubled if he starts losing. Sniper is chickenified. There, that is one of the earliest Necrophoses I've ever seen. Level 5 Necrophose for the Volica. Square. Tank through. Both these players have 100 health. They can't survive. Too much chickenification. Pew gets one more on the way out. Nice little pickup. The Bolica keeps 100 health. B Limit Breaker also keeps 100 health. All right. Speed Limit Breaker and Babolica. Babolica again. Going for Night Trolls by the looks of it. This might actually be the build. He's got three trolls already. Only needs to troll Warlord. So this might be exactly what we thought. We called it at the start. Cool to see. Trades out the, trades out the Shadow Shaman. Now you can keep this around again. Build into it late game. There's no reason to sell it at this point. You can still go for it later. Gonna be fighting the bot, we don't care. But Bolica though. Oh, sorry, a B. Can B hold on to the full 100 health? Puck getting sawed away out there by Sniper. And that's gonna be a dead Puck. Sniper's fully charged. Boom! Big damage. Bat Rider down. And say goodbye to the 100 health of B. B down to 98, leaving just Bolica at 100 health. See how long Babolica can keep that up. That's Babolica already sitting nice and pretty. In a good position to hold at this early stage, especially with all these knights on the board. And of course he can move more into trolls. That's a very late game play though, if he does choose to do so. Of course he would be fishing for... Uh, if that was the play. Ooh, gets a bat rider. Interesting. So might still be wanting to go into dragons as well. But of course, you want Troll Wall for that, which is a level 5 unit, legendary, which means you need to hit at minimum level 8 and preferred level 9 for that 5% roll. Sorry, 3% roll. Moving forward. Beastmaster, absolutely deleted. Sends. Struggling a little good torn with the battle with the uh with the hunger for battle from the axe there, but not enough. Knight value. Holding through for the moment. Knights with that lovely troll bonus for Batrider really getting some good value here. And of course, that immediate CC almost with the teleporting cask. Babolica, Babolica, level 3. Picks up a couple more things. We're going to keep watching Babolica. Sending Tot at the top of the board for the moment. Lots of extra value here. Already double warlocks, as really mentioned. One of them being the troll. Going to be looking for one more knight. So he already has the Luna. Likely the Dragon Knight. Abaddon could also fit in here very well. Would synergize quite well with the uh, with the Necrophos. Could sell the Pudge if that was the case. Nice job. Tanks through Wanderers. Who is going for that Primordial Mage Assassin. But hasn't really picked up the units they want. Having to use a Lena. As a sort of as a transitional unit for now. Has upgraded to level 2 though. So we'll lose value from that. But Wonder is beginning to drop a lot of health. Does have Dragon Bonus. But right now needs a lot more upgrades to get value out of this. Shifter 
who has leaned on Primordials every single game so far, is continuing to sit on this Bloodbound composition. He's given up on the Brawnies completely. Everyone has except for Sens. And is instead just going for some assassins here. Got a Bloodseeker with it. He's got a Tiny for tankiness. Just spamming stuff. He's got Lunas. Big time contract Luna can be pretty deadly. PvE round, Babolica. Currently sitting at that 6 and 0 win streak because we have she has won every single round in terms of PvP. Lots of shots coming out. Good transformation there. Bringing out that Shadow Shaman back onto the board with the level up. Again, no reason not to. You don't really have anything else that will benefit you. Throwing out that Luna, yeah, maybe it, it upgrades your positioning potential, but you haven't really seemed to care about that that much anyway, so might as well just get that little bit of extra value, that extra transformation at level 2. It's a 5 second, trans 6 second, sorry, transformation. Pudge already on the board giving you the undead bonus, so you're miles away from an elusive bonus, so why the hell not? Item-wise, picked up a, uh, a fall from grace here. Hmm. Potential for humans to fill in and add more Heartless to this. Of course, Dragon Knight, if that is the path they go down, is a human, so will gain that undying bonus. And if they find an Omni Knight as well, that will be working well too. In theory, they could build an almost entirely undead knight composition here and then just replace the Chaos Knight with it. Be fighting into B. Two Ogre Magis here. No big time contract. Trying to fight the way through. It's good damage output here. Trying to get, work their way through. Good trick in transformation, though. That might be enough. It was looking rough there for a second, and Puck might have carried if it wasn't for that chickenification. And the Hex from Shadow Shaman carries through. Good to see that sneaking its way back in, keeping him alive, keeping him healthy. Good attempt by Puck, though. No Octarine Essence, though. The Vitality Boost kept alive for a while. And, of course, that phase out getting some really good value there. Switch Doctor level 2. Feels good. Still with that Blink Dagger. So much value there. Let's see where he goes. He still has Viper. So potential value there. Babalika still sitting at 100 health. Again, it's going to be trying to eco up to 50 and then probably will spam for that uh, Troll Warlord. That's the main strat here. Looking for a Dragonite as well, which is why he has the Viper. Sorry, they have the Viper. Pudge. Dead, but that's an absolute wreck. Drow, uh, Drow Ranger there. Completely destroyed. Chaos Knight down. Necrophose. Good damage and healing. And now we see, now we see Batrider carry. Nice, one more transformation for Shadow Shaman. And yeah, Batrider carries now. Not enough damage output to finish it off. Very nicely done. The hook was a good attempt, but there's just too much tankiness there. And this Shadow Shaman really is carrying. Really good value. That's an eight-game win streak right now. How long can Babolica keep it up? Remember, this is the best of two, so it's not over yet. Even if you lose round one in last place here, you come first and everyone else uh, places in exact opposite positions, you can still tie for first place. No sense giving up yet. Dragon Knight on the board. In the front line for now, because there is a Viper. But it's not on the board yet. So right now, Dragon Knight is melee. So place into the front line, replacing the Shadow Shaman for the moment. Just for that night bonus as he placed the Lunar on the board as well. Here comes that big time contract Bloodseeker though. Is this going to work out? And nope, it's dead. Ogre Magi trying to tag forward, but it's completely alone. Boost onto the already dead Nature's Prophet. And that did not work out. Shift just got deleted. And that Bloodseeker not getting the value that he would be hoping right now. It needs to be ignored to really get the value out of this. I understand the build, but he's not getting value out of it at all. Not yet, at least. Keep seems irritated. Are you in this game, Keep? How could he win this round? The board was full of two stars. Oh, you mean this guy? Oh, you mean Bavolica, or are you watching this? Plus one, three. Yeah, but he has that knight value. Huge knight bonus here.
Babalika tanking through, keeps the 100 win rate. Completed his win streak. He's about to hit 10 wins, though. Holding it together. The synergy in the night bonus here. Going to be running into Primordial Mage Dragons. No assassins here. Just Primordial Mage Dragons. That is a transformed Dragon Knight. Let's see if it can do any extra value here. It's Dragon Knight of Babolica is already taken out. It's down to Batrider, but Batrider for the first time is really outnumbered. And the winning spree is over. Transformed Dragon Knight, more than regular Dragon Knight, confirmed. Able to take him down. Babolica loses the win streak to Wanderers. Wanderers with an all with a double primordial here. Full mage composition. Very nicely done here. Already got the uh the morphlings ready to continue the move into primordials when he finds that uh when he finds that arc warden. Upgraded tiny there. Finds a viper as well. Could use that level up too. Looking good. Wanderers. Beginning to make a comeback. Primordials with the turnaround. Moves his Viper onto the front line. It's only level one, so it's a little squishy, but it's still got value. Very, he's move. Ah, he's repositioning for the Dog and Pony show. My mistake. Didn't pay attention to the round number. Everything jumps to the back line. Crystal Maiden's going to get ignored, actually. That's good news. Crystal Maiden lives. Crystal Maiden lives for quite a long time. Lots of mana for the rest of the team, and that's going to be a very easy cleanup. Tiny tanks through. Viper, good damage. Very easy cleanup. Wanderers takes that down. Sends. Also able to come out victorious here. B. Survives barely thanks to that Viper. And Ami. Also lives. Everyone repels except for the bot, but we don't care about the bot because it's silly. Who cares about the bot? Alrighty, repositioning time. And of course, still going to be looking for... Uh, still going to be looking for that Arc Warden. Has two... Uh, has two Queen of Pains in the hand. Again, it's a Primordial Mage Assassin composition. The composition that hasn't really changed, like, at all since its inception. Since its inception before we play, this composition hasn't really adjusted even a bit. Going to be able to upgrade that Razor, but it's going to do it after interest. Composition, Tiny Razor. Tiny, ra tiny Razor Morphling, Arc Warden, Queen of Pain, Viper. Puck, Crystal Maiden. Standard composition. Very usual. Nothing special about it. Going to be fighting into what looks like it might end up being an elusive druid composition. Big time contract was in fact applied to the looter, but not enough damage right now. Immediately burst through. Why is there a bot? Because one of the players, a one of the players did not join the game in time. So as such, they were disqualified and replaced with a bot. That is why Harkle Street. If you don't add a bot, the game the game UI dies. So we have to add a bot. Alrighty. Lots of level 2s. Amir's hit level 7. Is someone still going scrappies? Yes, they are. And he's not highest level. That is actually a little bit of a misplay here. Again, if you are going for the full scrappy build, you really want to try and hit that level 9 first to get that techies or that gyrocopter if you do plan on using the alchemist could probably use a second a uh, second warlock as well if he does plan on keeping that alchemist we'll see how that goes for him we'll keep on board with wanderers right now as he is the lowest outside of the bot tanking through against amir beautifully the double razor with huge aoe power burning through puck as well with very solid damage output here Running a Brute of the Martyr here, not the most usual ability, uh, not the most usual item for Puck, but it's still extra mana. Able to burn through. Amir takes the hit. Bot's about to die, feels good. Sends us on a nice amount of health. Square moves into first place. We can have a look at the compositions right now. The Scrappy's looking good. It has some Assassins to build into later with Slog and Phantom Assassin already and in position. And of course, already having the Bounty Hunter. Needs to get some levels to get them on the board, though, to complete that. And of course, you're looking for that fourth uh, that fourth Inventor, which can be the Gyrocopter or the Techies. If you do go for Techies, you can trade out Alchemist. If you do go for Gyrocopter, you can keep the Alchemist and you get that Sniper bonus. It overall could be a better comp. We'll see. Gonna be fighting into square right now. 
See how Wanderers able to survive. Good throw by Tiny. Keeping it alive, but Razor gets deleted. Disarmed and deleted. Missiles coming out from all angles. Tiny tanks through. Eidolons versus Sniper. Let's go. Turns out Eidolons can't beat Sniper. Who knew? Quick cleanup. Easy victory. Square. Showing why he is currently sitting in that solid first place. Tied with Bobolica. Traded out two of his scrappies there for a second. Because he doesn't have enough space for him yet. Went for those assassins first. So he, tra he moved back Alchemist and Clockwork to choose to run assassins before the scrappies. Interesting. Needs to get some levels there. But we'll see how well it goes. Wonder is still sitting at 50 health. We'll keep on board with him as he's still looking in the worst position. Uh, Gonna be fighting the bot. That's boring. This looks the most interesting as the score is the closest. Amit versus Shifter. We're going to be keeping an eye on that Luna damage right now because Luna does have that big time contract. She's getting focused by three heroes though. Big Walrus Punch. And see you later, Luna. Luna taken out. She still topped the damage chart, but not enough to take, claim victory there. Whereas that Venomance, so big damage output. Uh, Drianario, you register for this tournament by hitting exclamation mark bracket. To do that, you will find the bracket page. At the top of your page, you will see the ESL play, and next to that, you will see Dota Underlords. When you click on that, you will have a list of all tournaments that are happening. The regions are just time zones. You can enter into any single one of them. So pick the one with the best time zone for you, and you can enter that way. Best of luck. If you plan on entering an EU one, then I will potentially cast it, and I hope to see you there. Alrighty. Amma gets a Lycan level 2. Feels good. Sends us dropped to 58 health. Bear trap time. Viper into the back line. Running a Sand King as the third assassin. Very interesting. Now the third assassin with this competition really can be anything. It doesn't matter. Queen of Pain is usually picked because it gets the, uh, because it gets the demon bonus. But it's pretty decent. Mask of Madness is pretty good on Sniper, but Sniper, he did get his ult reworked, which does make him very effective even without the Mask of Madness now. Mask of Madness used to be only because his ult would just break and he wouldn't target anything. It would target dead units, so you'd lose value, which is why you would get the Mask of Madness. Nowadays, it's still good, but the Snipe itself, the actual assassinate ability itself, is now really decent. Item-wise, Skull Basher. So many upgrades! Level 8's coming in. Managed to fill out the board up to level 7. It's managed to fill out one more Scrappy. Went with the Clockwork because it is the higher level for the moment. Shifter, he's still trying to power up this Luda. And Wanderers. Still searching for an Arc Warden. Feels bad he hasn't found one yet. Going to be fighting into Ame. Venomancer in the back line, trying to cause some chaos. Gets ravaged though, tight under good value. Trying to force the fight forward. There's the dash by Morfling. Plasma Field coming out from Razor. One last ditch effort, but no. The tankiness from Slardar deletes the value there. But oh, Sand King with the attempt to turn around. When it's just Puck, the Eidolon buys Puck some time to do some damage. Gets mana, Brute of the Martyr snipes the kill. And Ami. Goes down, another win for Wanderers, keeping himself alive. Nicely done. Very effective. The bot is somehow still alive. I assume it had an Aegis? Yes, it did. Speaking of which, we can see Aegis is on the board. We have a, gar a Dawning of Ristol. Very interesting when you do have a Warlock, but each to their own, I guess. We have the Summoning Stone. No actual Summoners. But he's just got a load of stuff. Just a, lo just a lot of stuff. He's got the Mage bonus. Level 3 Ogre Magi and a Viper. More summons here, but actually a Venomancer to get value out of it. And, of course, the Lycan. He's going to be fighting Bobolica now. Bobolica at 65 health. Viper tanking in the back line. Viper versus Viper fight down there. Puck trying to do damage, but Puck is getting chunked there by the Maelstrom. Maelstrom value coming in there. Luna. Smashing that DPS and Luda is carrying this. Great value. Good attempt there by the Morphling to turn this round. But Luna of Bobolica turns that very much in their favor. Viper getting some good value too. 
Very nicely done. Morphling. Really carrying there. The bot's dead. Nice. We lost the bot. Still level 7 right now. Spending money on rerolls, not on level ups. Actually, no, there was a level up, I think. Ooh, clockwork. Flooding the board to make room. 58 money right now. Does he get the clockwork? Looks like he lets it go. That's clockworks and timber souls. Ignoring level ups right now. Wonder is finally a clone, actually, so we'll jump on board with this fight. Bolica versus Ameth. Cast coming in. Big stun lock there. Getting some great value. Here comes the turnaround play with the hook, but it hits a wolf. Nothing of value. We see Venomaster desperately trying to spam out the summons, but the tankiness of the knights are just deleting everything in its path. The Bolica with this insane tank lineup just crushes everything in its path. Nicely done. Nicely done. Burning through there. Wonder is he was able to take out Sen's bot. Does stay alive. B Limit Breaker down to 43 health. Catching up to Wonder Res here. As is Sen's. Neither one having a really easy time. Lots of level ups. Tiny level 3 for Wonder Res. That's a really big deal. Ark Warden has been found. Ark Warden's on the board, team. Well, not on the board yet, but Ark Warden is in the hand, on the bench. Needs that level up. Needs that level up fast. Going to be e coming up and potentially saving up to just 40 gold to keep that on the line. But that Ark Warden needs to be on the board. That Primordial Bonus, he has everything else. But he needs that Ark Warden. Right now, Venomancer getting some crazy value baiting Assassins. Really good positioning for it. Absolutely love it. Helm of Undying trying to keep it alive. It's now up to Morphling. Morphling carry. Able to go through. Very nicely done. Level 3 Morphling turns out actually kicks ass. Who'd have known? Everyone knew. Everyone knew this. Morphling's kind of cool. Morphling bursts through. You can see it's actually topping his damage chart by a significant amount. Viper, again, a lot of PvE damage with that corrosive shell. Really good value there. Shifter down to 47 as well. This board is kind of chaotic. <laughs> Running a two scrappies, but I assume they're just filling the board, filling the board for board filling purposes. It's got some knights. Knight warlock. Yep, there we go. Sells everything. So it's knight warlock bloodbound with one warlock. Two Ogre Magis. And he's trying to stack up this Luna. That's why he's actually going for more knights to keep this Luna alive. This is the strat. But we're going to have a look at B right now because B sits down at 25 health. The mages. This is what this comp is. Mage Dragon. That is the comp. That is what they have. They don't even have a big time contract for the Soga Magi. It's just the fact that he is level 3 so therefore can absorb a lot of hits with that, th that 3,000 health. Attempts being made. So many zaps. Look at him go. Zap, zap. Feels good. Not enough. Crystal Maiden, carry. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they tried. They tried. Be limit breaker. Does not burst through there. Unlucky. Good attempt. Good attempt there. Also, that was just such a satisfying noise of those two throwing out at the same time. I have a vice. I have Skady Moon Shard. Nice. Who gets what? Oh, we're back up to free scrappies. We don't have the techies. And we don't have the gyrocopter. Not yet. Level 9 is what is needed for those. It's not needed, to be fair. The scrappy bonus is much better than the inventor bonus. Do you think half knight, half bloodbound is better than going full bloodbound meme of Arc Warden? Well, the bloodbound meme of Arc Warden isn't as good anymore, and honestly, he's so vulnerable. I don't think it's that worth anyway, unless you have some kind of insane sustain, which you've got to play warlocks to do. It's possible, but I don't think it's that worth the meme, any meme anymore. The knight could work out a little bit better, I think. It's definitely more viable as actually, you know, an actual strat as opposed to a meme. Double pucks, trying to carry. Dragon teleports, not enough. Phase out, absolutely wrecked by Wanderers. B, gonna eat a big chunk of damage here. B does have an Aegis. 
Not going to be forced to use it this time, but will eat some damage there. And to 11 health. Brace of Desperation. We're in the hand during that round. Didn't actually get used. Feels bad. B in the most danger, but again, Aegis Online Shifter down to 29 health right now. Still doing work. Alchemist getting some good damage here. A Brace of Desperation for the Double Acid. Double Acid Splash there. B. The two Vipers trying to carry. One of them doing a significantly better job than the other. Level 3 Razor. That's the opportunity there. Arc ones on the back line. Full Primordials. No, not full Primordials. He removed the... Wait, what? What's he missing? Oh, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have Tiny. Feels bad. Alrighty. That's the real one. Bye, Arc Warden. Absolutely wrecked. Hello, Arc Warden. My name is Pudge, and your day is ruined. Hook comes into an already dead unit. Puck's unable to carry, and we're going to see the Aegis of B get popped. B Limit Breaker. In trouble. Might be going out in seventh place here, unless they can do something to turn this round. Because right now, B is in a potentially losing situation. Level 3 Phantom Assassin for Square. More Scrappies. Two, two Alchemists currently, for reasons. Has the Techies now. Feels good. Why do you have two Alchemists, though? For fun? I guess for fun. I guess for fun. Alrighty. Well, Techies on the board. Three Assassins already. Alrighty. Well, we'll keep an eye on B. He just has been burned. We'll be fighting Sens. Sen's not on the highest health, 44. Check out stacks. 49 kills on this Beastmaster. 5,000 health. Level 3. Doing some crazy value. It's got the big time contract. And that is a Beastmaster about to ruin your day. And we're going to see B going out in 7th place here. Picking up only 2 points. Hello, hello. Okay, that's fine. B will drop out here. Shift down to five health. B's in seventh place. Remember, this is the best of two, so B's not out. A first place finish could still be 12 points. That could still be a really big deal. We're on to Shifter now. The, he's bit so much effort onto this looter. Is it worth it? Is this going to turn in his favor in the end? He's got Knights. Heartless, Bloodbound, Demon, Warlock. So much stuff. So much reliance on this Luna to carry. Necrophos. Being used to flood the board here just to make room. Chaos Knight. Upgraded. Making more room. Not going to buy anything else. You're on five health. We'll Does have an Aegis. Let's see how well this comp works. Going to be fighting into Bobolica. The full knight composition here. Necrophos is about to have a bad day because here comes the cask. Oh, that feels bad. Luna trying to carry, but no, the Glaives don't even hit the right target. They don't bounce because they focus the Witch Doctor. Doesn't even matter, though, because that was a brutal ass whooping. And we say goodbye to Shifter Gaby. Or he burns the Aegis, at least, sorry. Aegis is used. And Shifter is in a rough position right now. Not looking good for moving on. Alchemist did some damage. But when your max damage is 4,000, somehow Omni Knight did the same, but this isn't good. This is bad news. You've got to change your strategy somehow. Something must change. Going to be moving to the back line. We've got a Lycan level 3. There's an Aegis for Babalika. Babalika is looking great for coming for in the top two at minimum. Big point numbers. Going to be fighting those big dinos. Moving in. This is where the Luna could actually get some really good value. Gets bloodlusted there. Bloodlusted. And the boost from the big time contract. And it is doing a huge amount of damage, but nothing is dying. Well, good to see that that's what the result of that is. Can we agree that this isn't working? Can we all agree that this composition is not working? Something's got to be different. Disruptor. I like the Disruptor. 
Disruptor could be the changing the ta the change in pace here that's needed to turn this round. What do you replace though? The alchemist maybe? You don't have a scrappy bonus. Picks up items, got a Dagon. A little bit of burst. Has a mask of madness and he's put it for some freaking reason on his Chaos Knight. Put the mask of madness on the Luda! Put the big time contracts on someone else! Put it on Abaddon! Abaddon's already tanky as hell! Put it on Chaos Knight! Get that damage going! Spamming out the upgrades right now. Looking for the Disruptor. Oh, you gotta sell summon. Alright, well, that might be the. That could be it. And that's their chance. Disruptor's on the board as well. Gonna be fighting into Wanderers right now. Who finally has four primordials. Level threes across the board. Alchemist just entered the back line. Alchemist just went for it. Gets the second with the acid splash, but is the damage output really there? Absolutely not. Say goodbye to Shifter, guys. Shifter will be dropping out in fifth place, in the sixth place in this group. Sorry, in this grand final. Going to be picking up three whole points. Absolutely brutal. Sen's just got chugged. 21 damage. Good lord. Sen's in serious trouble there. Nine kills on Axe. Really? 64 on Beastmaster. Two on Juggernaut. Feels bad. And three. When your jug level three Juggernaut has one less kills than your level one Disruptor, you know you're having a bad day. <laughs> You know you're not having a good time. But big time contract on that Beastmaster is where we're going to start seeing the value coming in here. But Wanderers is where it's at. Sends, no Aegis. They have very similar items. Let's see how it works out. They're going to be fighting each other. 21 versus 23 health. Viper in the back line. Going to be baiting in a lot of hits. Tanking through. Going to be taken out though. So much damage. Juggernaut cleaning up the damage. Arc Wardens with some good damage. But there's no way they can tank through this. Beastmaster's just destroying them. Absolute deletion here. More Eidolons. Nope. Juggernaut Whirlwinds. Easy cleanup. And you can see the crit there. There was an argument earlier about Jugger whether Juggernaut autoed while he was whirlwinding. And the answer to that is yes. You can see the Daedalus coming in there. Juggernaut does auto attack while he is spinning. So you get a little bit of extra value there. Wanderers on 11 health. Level 3 Lycan, Babalica, level 3 Witch Doctor. Oh my god, that's brutal. That's that teleporting Witch Doctor that's been such a pain for everyone else to deal with. There's a Lich on the board to try and turn this round. It didn't do anything in the last round, in the last fight. Maybe they'll get lucky this time. Come on, Lich. Chain Frost for the win. We're we'll finding Ami. Ami. Running a... Tanky Hunter composition. Tanky Savage composition, sorry, not Hunters. Moving in, here comes the boat. That's the real, that's the absolutely real Arc Warden there, so very bad news. Puck trying to carry itself. Lich did get the ability off, but it did not do enough damage. Puck cannot carry alone. 1v4, and goodbye, Puck. And that is going to be Wanderers getting eliminated in fifth place. Four points secured. Who's into the clone as well? Fifth place finish there. Remember, best of two. That's still four point. That is still four points secured. That's still a big, a big number. First place in round two. That's fourteen points. That's two second places. It's a big deal. Every extra position you can finish in counts. Babalika seven health though. Not looking great in terms of overall hit point numbers to try and hold on to this. Scrappies. Scrappy assassins. Techies. Techies trying to stay alive. Helm of the Undying gonna be not going to be used here. Big explosion, though, coming in. Techies will die. But it's all about this, Glad. It's all about this, Tinker. Teleported Missile Boy! Woohoo! See ya, nerds. Gonna go down, though. Not enough. Big chunks of damage. That's gonna be Mavalika staying alive on 7 health, though. Big damage gonna be done to Square. Square will... No, Square's out. Square in fourth place, securing five points. Oof. Did not expect that to be so brutal. Very well, then. The Scrappy's not enough there. Getting absolutely destroyed. Two 
tide, three tide hunters. I know he's finding the board right now, but what the hell? Looking for that tide hunter upgrade. He's managed to find almost four. He's managed to find almost four level fours. Sorry, almost nine level fours. Feels good. Feels real good. He's got a level three purge. Level three lichen is just destructively amazing. Mabolica, though, on seven health. We'll be jumping on board. Fighting off the dragon. Forcing their way through. Dragon taking some big hits here. You can see a little bit of lightning coming in from the Maelstrom as well. And that's an easy kill. Sends. Also, very easy victory. And Amir. Very easy victory. Do we get that tied three? Not yet. But let's actually keep an eye on, the sh let's keep an eye on their shop. See if we do get that. Actually, no. Let's close the shop so we can see what items they pick up first. And then we'll see if we get that tied three. Because the dream could be real. Refresher orb. Big oof. And Mabolica is really grouped up as well. So that's going to be so much value. Refresher orb coming in here for Ame as well. Immediately on the tide hunter. And in his big group up at Heroes. Get that cooldown reduction. Because once again, Refresher orb got buffed. It now also does AoE. Sends. Looks like it picked up a... A Dawning? Don't know what he picked up, actually. Oh, I guess a star. The scythe. Scythe of Vice. Alrighty. Let's look on Anme. Doesn't want to roll any further. Gonna hold on to his money. Send. Seven health. Has an Aegis. Gonna be fighting into... Sorry, Babalika with an Aegis. Gonna be fighting into Sen's ghost. Abaddon with that refresher orb. Doesn't matter if you're silent. Gets the shield. Big heals coming out from the Warlock bonus. Get silenced, though, by Axe, and that will be enough to clean him up. That Axe Battle Fury really would have turned around. Sorry, not Battle Fury. The Berserker's cool. Nice little turnaround there. Babalika going to burn that Aegis. I'm going to watch Amne again. Want to see if they get that Tide 3. Need two Tides for this. But it is possible. There is enough money here very easily. Babalika, Aegis burned. That is the last Aegis in the game. Unless someone else picks one up. It's a Lich. Immediately purchased. Immediately sold. <laughs> Decides against it. Techies purchased. Techies sold. Lich again. Lich purchased. Lich sold. He's trying to reset the legendaries here. That's the plan. Lone Druid. Feels good. Not what you're looking for, but it's summon. I wouldn't hate to see the one more re-roll and lock. Roll and lock here. Just in case. Not seeing that though. Gonna be finding Babolica. This is the real Babolica right now. On seven health with no more Aegis. Dragonite pulled in by the punch. Gonna be trying to focus onto the low druid. Big ravage from Tidehunter. As Tidehunter, he gets the refresher orb. Second ravage, and that is so much CC. Venomancer is almost uncontested in the background with the extra healing from the Warlock Warlock boost. And that's gonna be a clean cleanup by Amme. And we'll say goodbye to Babolica in third place. Babolica will go down here. And that will be a securing of five point of six points, sorry. Sens also lost Babolica bot though. Down to one health and Sens. Sens is in trouble, guys. He has gone with the Mask of Madness though. Let's see if that works out. Why did he buy and sell the five cost units? Well, for starters, they were four cost because they had friends and family, but I assume he was trying to reset the legendary pool instead of just having them re-roll back in. Just to have a better chance of them coming up again. I don't know if that works, but that might have been what he's going, what he was doing. Hi, Lapahulk. How you doing? Gonna be rolling in here, Amni versus Sens. Probably final round of this first game of the grand finals. Moving forward. Sniper trying to carry here as his Beastmaster. This Beastmaster has 8,100 health. Sniper pulled in, though, by the purge. Sniper will get eliminated. Beastmaster outside of the uh, outside of the static field, though. Beastmaster is 1v4-ing. Another hook from purge. Axe has come out, but there's just too much damage. We'll say goodbye. Sens goes down. No Aegis. And that will be Amnit taking game number one of the grand finals. And we will be preparing for game number two. Ten points goes to Amne. Sends picks up seven. Feels good, team. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Why am I why am I over here? What happened? That's game number one of the grand finals. We'll be getting ready to jump into game number two very shortly. Several people have left the party. God, stay in the party, goddammit. Makes it so much easier. 
Also, they might not have known as the best of two, in which case, rip. People people don't read the rules sometimes. God damn. I had one person who messaged who like added me on Twitter and messaged me asking how to contact ESL about casting. It's on the rules page. R read a bit. <laughs> Either way, we're waiting for the rest of the players. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one player left. We'll see if we can get them back in. And we will get ready to jump into game at number two. No break, because we hopefully will have all the players ready to go very shortly. And then we can jump in and get underway. My nose is super itchy. Feels bad. Mm -mm. There we go. Alrighty then. So, we still only have six. We've lost a player again. Feels bad. Feels bad, team. Alrighty. There's an achievement for buying five cost units. That could be it as well. That would make sense. Waiting for the players to ready up. Waiting for them to jump back in. They're, of course, sending the results to the admins. Feels good. Feels good indeed. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to be getting, re getting ready to jump in as soon as possible. And we'll be getting underway. Alrighty. So, so far, the overall score, as we already mentioned, that is going to be... Oh, we got set, we got player number seven. Feels good. We got square back, I think it was. So, An Anime going to be sitting on ten points for coming first. Second place sends on seven points. So, now it comes a question of how far down does Amne finish. Because if Amne finishes anywhere below second... Yes, anywhere below second, then there is a chance someone else can win. If Amne finishes second, the most that can happen is a tie. Simple as. So every time Amne one player gets eliminated, one other player has a lesser chance of winning. Because, of course, it, 10 points is a huge deal. If ten po if there's 10 points and Amne finishes 8th, then everyone has a chance of winning. If, there are if Amne has 10 points and Amne finishes 6th, then the person in 7th and 8th place don't have a chance in the first game, don't have any chance of winning. It's mathematically impossible. So then, let's get ready. Players, we're just waiting for Amne to ready up, and then we'll be getting ready. We'll be getting ready very shortly to jump into game number two. Points are accumulated. If there is a tie, remember, we will take into account positions from previous games. And that is how it will get underway. We're just waiting for Amne, and then we'll be underway. I'm going to have a drink. Feels good. Mm -mm. Hope everyone's enjoying the casting. Enjoying the game so far, but I don't have this on. Nope, that's not it. Where is it? That? No, that's a shirt. Where's the ESL logo? I had it. Where's it gone? I've lost the ESL logo. There it is. Feels good. I do not understand that, I'm afraid. If you could keep the chat to English, that would be very appreciated. Um, if you can't understand, uh, however, if you can understand English, this is the last game coming up. EULCF, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome. This is going to be the last game coming up right now. So there you go. Um, yes, is the uh, if I spoke too much and added too many words there. I know how annoying that can be over complicating sentences. I'll type it in the chat as well. Um, yes. There we go. Alrighty, we're still waiting for Amner to ready up. Come on, Amner. Get in here. We have a final to cast. We have games to do. Get underway. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Get going. I'll reply to a message, I guess, if we're going to be waiting. Top three gets rewards and it's over. If the game ends, that's it. If the game ends. So you add the scores together from this game and the next and the last game. We add those two scores together, and who then we have our top three. Simple. It's done. Then they get the rewards and the cup is over. This is the last game, no matter what. There you go. Good luck, set. Good luck, sense. You're in a good position. Second place in the first game. You're in a good position to take first if you get a first place position, or if Amna doesn't finish too high. You're looking good. Best of luck, buddy. Mm -mm. 
Come on, Amne. Get in here. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm literally just replying to a message right now. He's here. Hooray! We're ready to up. All right. Well, someone hit go then. We're ready to go. Um. Okay. Well, I replied to my message while we were waiting. Feel good. The bot will do it. Let's see if you're right there. Keep it real. Because it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the grand finals. Game number two. Let's jump in here. We have Wanderers. In for, uh, currently sitting at the top here. Gonna buy anything? There we go. Ogre Magi. Shifter, also of an Ogre Magi. Sends with the Venomancer. Amnir, first place in this group. He is running with... Oh, sorry. They are running with the Tusk. We have Beal Limit Breaker with another Tusk. We have Square with the Bat Rider. And Babalika bringing out the Tusk. That is four Tusks. And the if you include the bot... Which we don't. Sen's already selling and picking up the razor here. Realizing that so far no one else is building into primordials. So picking up that razor very quickly. But there's Shifter picking up primordials of his own. Also selling his Ogre Magi. We have two Embarrassment of Riches. What else do we have item wise? Gloves of Haste. Very standard stuff. Lots of Savages. Two Savages immediately picked up here. Venomancer Tusk and Enchantress Tusk. And Shifter swapping out as well, going for it. Some savages early on, too. Alrighty. Moving forward, easy kills for the savages. No one's going to have any difficulties at this stage. No synergies yet for Wanderers, but he has got some good units to rotate in multiple directions. No brawnies yet, no one's found any. Nothing yet. Tusk Warlock Shadow Shaman. Chantress Ogre Magic Shadow Shaman. Yeah, not finding the stuff they want yet. Level up for everyone. Tusk Tusk, Drow Ranger Bat Rider. Lots of things picked up immediately. Broadies immediately online for Sens. Finding three off the bat. Did he just get all of those? He got, I think he got most of those at the same time. Feels good. Axe, Juggernaut, Beastmaster. Let's go. No kills in any of them yet. Let's see who picks them up. Beastmaster, I think, gets one. Yes, he does. Two. Axe pick No, Juggernaut picked up one. And they pick up one each as well. Four and two. Nicely done. Lots of stacks there. Lots of stacks being acquired. Once again, picking these up early is a huge deal. Get them as stacks as fast as possible. Smuggler going to be coming in for Vavolica. A little bit of extra stackage there. Tyrol annoying everyone by picking up Brawnies and the Tusks, despite pretty much everyone wanting to use Tusks. Well, two people wanting to use Tusks. Primordial's already coming in for Shifter. It's worked for him so well so far in the last couple of games. Let's see if that keeps going. Very solid here. Savage bonus. Deciding to move out of the primordials for now. Savage a little bit better earlier. So that seems to be the play. Aegis for Amne. Really, really smart for Amne. We're going to keep an eye on Amne for the moment. Amne is in a position where they have to finish as high as possible. So what do you do? You pick an Aegis. You have nothing to lose here. Just finish, finish mid to high. Run that Aegis. Keep yourself alive. Do the best you can. Amnit. Take the first round loss. Only one damage. But damage is damage. Sends a second place. Best chance of coming first. Outside of Amne. And again, it's all about how fast Amne finishes. Now, the biggest deal here is there is a bot. This does mean that the minimum Amne can finish is 7th. Which is pretty bad news for uh, pretty bad news for whoever was seventh in game number one, because that makes their odds of finishing for uh, finishing ahead of Amne very very low. Sens versus B, 
Both 100 health. In fact, all the 100 health players are finding each other. Looking for stacks. Juggernaut. Spin! Spin! He died. So much tankiness. Oh my god. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Four stuff as well. See ya, Beastmaster. Very nicely done. So B has a very low chance of winning here. B would have to come first, and somehow Amne would have to come seventh for B to have a chance of winning. There's no chance of the bot coming in la coming anywhere above last place. So Amne in a good position to try and take that. B needs to finish first, which is looking good so far at 100 health. Running in with that savage composition, but picking up a Chaos Knight for that nice little demon bonus just for now. Nice little set. Had a, a nice diagonal line of savagery there. Seems to have abandoned it, though. Gonna be finding Shift. Shift has moved into those primordials, pulling out the Queen of Pain as well. Everything is level 1, though. Feels bad. Tusk is down, as is Tiny. Lycan transforms, and that is the fight over. Amne is not loosened to the bot. Good for Amne. B. Taking out Wanderers. Keeps the 100 health. And Babalika. As we already mentioned, took out Shifter. So the two 100 health players stay on 100 health. Keeping it together. Sends. Feels bad. Dropping down to 88 health. But of course, they can. he's going to be stacking up the entire time this is going. X, 6, 5. Looking good. Once he gets those hero level ups, going to be in a great position to keep moving. Now then. B, Druids. Running with the elusive Druid for now, just for that Druid bonus. Not that he's going to want to rotate that later. Likely into a lone Druid, as we would expect. He'll be finding Amner. Amner at 99 health. Looking good. Good Walrus Punch. That does take down the Juggernaut. And that will be B taking down Amner in this round. Looks good. Looks good indeed. Nicely done by Amne. Putting themselves. Uh, nicely done by B, sorry. Again, B needs to eliminate Amne as fast as possible. Barlika also sticking on the full 100 points. Has a Nature's Prophet. Summoning Stone? Not yet. Three rounds. Might be able to pick one up because he's got very heavy into stuff that could be here for the Summoning Stone. Ranger level 2 for Amne. Sends dropping below the bot. It's just fishing for those upgrades at the moment. There's another Lycan in the hand. We'll probably pick that up after the round. Once the interest is locked in. There it is. Can we find it against the bot? Can Sends at least beat the bot? Juggernaut spin. Juggernaut die. Axe Taunt. Axe Die. No, Sens can't even beat the bot yet. Sens needs to get those heroes upgraded or he is going to have a bad day. Sens in trouble. The two level, the two 100 players. B takes down Babalika. Remember, B is in seventh place right now with two points. B's got to win to have any chance. Even if B comes second, B will not have more points than Amne. B has to win to have any chance of coming first here. But all right. There's more of a chance here. Lots of savageries coming in. The bot so far has no synergies. <laughs> Feels bad. We're starting to see the hunters pa hunter part of the composition of Sens coming in. This might give them the chance to switch around. B going to be finding into Shifter. No Arc Warden yet. Playing the long game here. Once again with the Primordial Composition. Down goes Morphling. Viper. Tanking the Triumph Protector very effectively. But still dies. That Triumph Protector is level 2. And slaps. See you later, nerd. Nicely done. Good cleanup. B. Staying in first place. Looking good. Again, if B wins this, I will be amazed. But it really does require Amne to go out in seventh place. That's the only way B can do it. Even so, they'll be tied. In which case, it would come down to previous rounds. Where I'd have to like go back through their games and like try and find out who we placed where. Uh, B placed above Amne in the previous round. 
in the semifinals. B placed fourth in round two. Amne placed... Where did Amne place? Where is Amne? Amne placed first in round two. Oof, okay. And then round one. Nice little bit of damage in the PvE round. Easy cleanup. In round one, Amne placed first. And B... B placed third. Oof. So that means even if they tie, even if B comes first in this round and Amna goes out in seventh, B will still come second, even if they tie on points. Because so far, Amna has finished consistently higher in every round. I believe that's how it works. Feels the biggest of oofs. But that is how it will work. But a second place is still an admirable finish. Alrighty. B though, right now sitting real pretty, very heavy at the t very high at the top of the board, looking great. Not using that blink dagger yet, feeling confident. Moving in, gonna be finding one dress. Just oh my god, just slaps. Chaos Knight really getting the value here. Chaos Knight doing some hella damage. The rest of the comp will be able to finish off these backline hunters. Good damage from Windranger, but nowhere near enough. Walrus Punch for good measure. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Seven round win streak for B. Undefeated so far. Shifter has also dropped below the bots. Has the bot won rounds? It has. Well, we already saw it won. It won one against Sens. Sens, though, creeping up, though. Beginning to throw in a couple hunters into the composition. Sorry, warriors, not hunters. Giving himself just a big old tanky line. Ten kills. Still zero kills on this axe. Feels bad. Nine on the juggernaut. Feels good. B going to be fighting the bot. Can the bot win? Who knows? Full staff. There's no synergy here. There's no synergy here. Just, just goodbye. Goodbye. Amner again. Very important to see where they finish positioning wise, and they're going to take down Wanderers. One step closer to victory. Nicely done. Sense. Took down square there. No, they didn't. I No, wait. I was right. Yay. I am right. Barely. Alrighty. B continues the 100% win streak. It would be the first time we would have had a perfect game in the grand finals if this was to happen. Oops. Not what I meant to do. And to hit tab. There we go. There's, always, there's already only one Aegis in the games we've mentioned before. Look, carpal smugglers. Have snuck their way in. Gonna be against Square. Square just lost to Sens. Four staff value. Chaos Knight trying to focus onto the Venomancer. Takes it down very easily. Cask. Not yet charged. Feels bad. Abaddon trying to tank through. Abaddon on the back line now, but that mana from Crystal Maiden gives such a huge lead. Teleporting Tusk. Bye! And, oh my god, bye! Absolutely deleted. Slight shield from Abaddon. One last chance, but not enough. B keeps going. How is B doing this? This is crazy. Fantastic job so far, Druid Savage Demon. Like, the, surprisingly, this Ogre Magi Chaos Knight that has just been added to the composition seemingly at random is working very well. Now there's two Ogre Magis. No big time contract either. This isn't like a... We're aiming for the late game carry with something else. This is... I just have Belga Magis. They're here now. It's a really good hero at the moment. Due to the recent buffs, I'm just going to have it in my comp. It's the mage in my comp now. Or it's a mage in my comp. Going to be finding Shifter. 1-0 against Shifter. Not much has changed for Shifter, unfortunately. Crystal Maiden on the board. That will help a little. Good damage, actually, from Viper. And the Queen of Pain, and actually, actually, oh no, the Wisps, the Wisps, the Wisps, they carry, 
They carry! Oh, get back, He's dead! The winning streak is over! Shifter turns it round. The Viper Queen of Pain on the back line with that mage bonus for the extra Queen of Pain scream damage. Feels good, and B finally loses the win streak. We keep moving on, preparing for the next round. Beastmaster level two for Wanderers. And Shifter winning that round is a big deal. Again, that mage bonus, pretty clutch for the turnaround here. Going to move everything around to what a dog and pony show. Already preparing and getting into position. It was his last win streak round last time, but it's still cool to keep the hundred. Watch the hundred percent win rate. Moving in, tiny good positioning, tanking through, very nice. Queen of Pain, beautiful scream. And that will take down everything. Easy as. Easy AF. Sends now. On a win streak of their own, up to five here. Picking up them golds. Can see it. Let's see the items getting picked up. Summoning Stone feels good. Lycan and Venomancer coming in here for Amni. Summoning Stone for B as well. No summoners though. But some pri the option for Primordials a little later. See an Axe level 2 for Sens. Remember Sens is going for this brawny composition. He will of course be looking for a Disruptor. If he has a Disruptor, never mind. He needs Now he just needs space to put the Disruptor. Needs those level ups. In no hurry though. He's on 15 money. He can just wait for the round to roll over and he'll get it. Throw 15 XP. Just wait for the round to roll over and he'll be fine. I'm not going to be fighting Babalika here. Rolling in. Tanky composition. Good hook onto the Drow Ranger, but no one really targeting. Down goes Enchantress. Venomancer trying to spam. Getting all those Plague Wardens, but the Venomancer of Amnit is uncontested and is just tearing up right now. Amnit making the most of that Summoning Stone. Really getting the value there. Like him. Turning it up. That Savage bonus. Big deal. Tusk in the hand. Ready to upgrade it as with an Enchantress if they want to keep down that route. Since it has now managed to put... Here's a Disruptor onto the board. So we're going to start seeing potentially very big health numbers pop up here. And they're currently sitting in second place. 10 kills on this Juggernaut. 26 on Beastmaster. Feels good. And Axe still has no kills. Feels bad, Axe. Come on. Feels bad. Let's see how well it works. We'll be fighting into B. B who is still sitting very, very effectively in first place. Sniper's dead. Lycan will get the transformation. Getting that hunter bonus as well for that extra attack. Big damage runs into the disruptor. As they clean up everything else. Nicely done. Sends looking good. Amna defeated by Shifter. Shifter again. Creeping up the board. Sneaking in extra units. Going for some board flood right now. <coughs> Trying to make room. Using the board space here as well to basically buy everything from the shop and then sell it back. Try and manipulate your chances of getting what you want. Sold the units back a little early here though. A little strange there. Sneaking his way onto the board. Double demon? Who's running double demon? Doom Chaos Knight. Ah, you're right. You're right. Didn't even notice that. Shifter going to be fighting into Tyrol Bot. Babalika going to be fighting into Square. Knights versus Savages. Tanking through. Tree Unprotected dead. Turns out Knight's still really good. But that's a lot of summons from Venomancer. A lot of healing. But look at that. Abaddon's tanking so effectively. Nicely done. That's going to clean up. Lycan does a little bit of extra damage. Not enough to actually kill anyone. Having already a Draconite on the board and Viper in hand ready. This is looking really good for Babalika for late game. We'll be rotating into that very good. Viper and the Tyrobot is dead. Alrighty. This means that B cannot come first. At minimum, B can come second. 
Even if B wins and Amnir goes out next, Amnir has more wins that has a higher average positioning than B. So no matter what, B cannot come first. At maximum, B can come second now. Going to be fighting square into B right now. Night value. Fighting through. Reasonable Ravage, not perfect. Good heal from Omni Knight, buys time. But it's not going to be enough, look at that. Level 3 Trium Protector, incredible damage output. B looking good. And B has traded out the Chaos Knight. So we do no longer have that double demon. Feels good. The Balaka starting to look a little shaky down at the bottom here. That is a big time contract. With no other blood bounds on the board, so just health it health is health, I guess. See how well they go. Lots of upgrades. That's a level three bat rider coming in for square. Who is running this very night heavy composition? PvE round. Position to kill Tomato first. A risky play. To Potato is, of course, the carry here. Good hook. Punch value there. Is this a mistake? Oh, nice. That that punch hook actually turned that really in their favor. Really nicely done. That punch hook turned it completely on its head there because it allowed Potato to get focused. And because Potato went down first, tom Tomato is a very much a weaker threat. So it's a good pickup there. Very effectively done. Amna lost the PvE round. Ooh, pipe of insight for Babalika. Babalika, really solid player. We've seen him around before. Hasn't made it to the finals of any previous tournaments, but it's still a very solid player. Level 8, level 2 Shadow Fiend feels good. Viper level 2 as well. Nicely done. Mubalika just fishing for units right now. Arc Warden has been pulled, but not needed for this composition. You know I said I had a good feeling early. Gonna be fighting into B. Really Lycan getting focused hard. Lycan deleted there by Shadowfi in the back line. Transformation. Big damage. Ravage still comes out though from the Tide Hunter as they try to focus onto the back line with the Venom getting focused down. Big damage from the Slardar, but that's taken out. Shadowfiend is gone. And that is a very, very brutal victory there from B. The Balika. Big hit. That's going to be a huge chunk of health taken off. Feels bad. 10 damage. Balika still sits in last place. Amnir, though, down to 48. And again, the lower Amnir finishes, the better chance everyone else has. If Amnir finishes 7th right now, there will be two point, There will be 12 points total. Meaning that a lot of people have the potential of coming first. Everyone except Beal. Alrighty. Let's see how Babalika does into Sense. It's going to be a clone of Sense. Let's all see how Sense stacks go in. 39 here. Still zero kills! Come on, man! Still level 1 on Juggernaut as well. Only 16 there. There's the disruption, though, with the Static Storm. Brutal destruction. The Lich does get off the bouncing fro the Frozen Tempest there. But absolutely devastating. We do lose the uh, we do lose the Disruptor, but that's nowhere near enough. Surprise Lich, though. Very interesting. Chain Frost, that's what it's called. The surprise Lich turnaround there. <laughs> Unexpected. But, yeah. Brutalized there. Not ideal. Again, this doesn't really go with the comp either for Babalika. It's just it's just sort of here. Adds undead. He's already got two undead. Doesn't really seem to want to replace anything. Hasn't drawn anything that he would replace with. Except another tree and protector. Another tree and protector. Going to roll through most of his money at this point. Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend. How far do you roll, buddy? Punch level two. That will help. A little bit of extra damage will definitely actually put a little bit less pressure. But you're up against... Oh, actually, Lich will help here. 
I, guess, I suppose this is why Lich was picked, because there are a lot of knights on the board, but nowhere near enough damage. Lich is dead. Lone Druid, though, doing some good carry work, trying to tank through, but there's just too much. There's a Maelstrom on the board as well, I'm pretty sure I just saw. And with Lunar AoE, that's going to be a nice cleanup. Balika going to take even more damage. But Balika, no Aegis as well. In serious peril right now. Down to 13 health and has spent all his money. But Balika, we could be saying goodbye. Finish third place. Finishes seventh place here. We'll finish a total of eight points. Be a brutally, it will be a brutally unfortunate finish for Babolica. Amne, sitting at 42. Every person that goes out before Amne ruins another person's chance. Finding sense. Moving in, highly aggressive play. Has spent all the money. Snipe onto Lone Druid, but the bear lives. The bear is the carry here. Kills off. The axe carries through. The disruption could be worse, but it's too late. It's too late. Juggernaut spin. Shadow Fiend. Actually, actually, Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend. Oh, Shadow Fiend doing some damage. And Shadow Fiend carries through. Babalika survives another round. I really thought he was a gunner. But Shadow Fiend. Good value there. The extra health. The Dream sells the Lich. Throws in a Kumka. Alrighty. Very interesting. Wants that little bit of extra tankiness. Now it's three tanks on the board. Could use another Undead. Get that times four bonus. What do they want here? Babolica on 13 health. Shift has dropped down the board as well. Time for the PvE. Let's check out Shifter. Has managed to pick up an Arc Warden. Basically, build is complete. It's just that everything's a little low. Only level 2s across the board, except for... Our poor Razor. Just fishing for level 3s here is Shifter right now. Looking for anything he can. Octarine Essence for that, uh... For that Puck would also be a pretty big deal here. Currently just running a Brute of the Aggressor. But otherwise, build is complete. Just needs to get lucky with it. The Balika was victorious over the Burbs. In fact, everyone was. Refresher Orb for Sens. Refresher Orb for Babolica. Oh, Battle Fury for Babolica. Who's that going on? Lycan? Cypher Vice. Skydy. And there we go. Battle Fury onto the... Uh, Battle Fury onto Lycan. And with the Undying onto Lone Druid. Two bears. Two bears often better than one. Let's see how they do this. It's the Grand Finals, ladies and gentlemen. We are preparing to head into round 26. With Abolica sitting at the limit of elimination right now. We're going to be fighting into square. Full Knight composition. He now has the Kumka. Battle Fury AoE coming in from Lycan, but not enough mana being gained right now for the transformation as they try to burst through. Lone Druid tanking through though, but nowhere near enough cooldown to get the second bear out. Kumka with a good ghost ship though, and suddenly Lycan transformed with the Battle Fury. Yes, a little bit of damage output as we see Terrorblade trying to tank through. Sorry, Terra Fiend. Trying to tank through with the true damage through the Knights, but it's not enough. And that's going to be the three backline knights taking down Bobolica. Bobolica will be eliminated. No, free health. I can't count. I'm so bad with that. Bobolica survives. Three health remaining. Amne wins another round. Again, everyone is eliminated ahead of Amne. Changes the positioning. Lycan did some good damage there. The Shadow Fiend. True damage was good, but the transformation came very, very late. Unable to get it there. Wanderers gets a Drow range level 3. Amna is level 9. We can see Amna's composition here. Savage, Undead, Druid, Hunter, Warlock. Very standard here. Savage Druids. A little bit of Warlock value. Gonna be finding into Wanderers. Little bit good. Hook on the Venomancer. That's a big hit. And the stun onto Lone Druid prevents that bear from coming out for a long time. That is a brutal Lycan. 
Big time contract like an absolutely devastating. We will say goodbye. We will say goodbye to Babalika, who DC before he even lost. Amner, though, took a big hit as well. Amner down to 29 health right now. Can see that big time contract here with only a single Ogre Magi, but that's all you need when you have just that much DPS. Very effectively done. Brutal kills there. Picks up another win. Level 3 puck for Shifter. This is where Shifter can start to make comebacks. If he could keep the level 3s coming, this is where Shifter can turn this round into their favor. Now then. <coughs> Sorry. Let's see where they go from here. Moving forward, Andres. Forcing his way through. Bears come out. Amnit again. No what Amnit can now be cannot defeat Amnit. So many hunter shots coming in. Amnit's gonna lose another round. Oh boy, Amnit's gonna lose another round. More hits to the health. Does have any you just remember? But right now, Amnit can at most finish sixth. Meaning a grand total of 13 points. So B cannot beat Amner anymore. Shifter can tie with Amner. So then it just comes a question of where did Shifter finish in previous rounds? In the semi-final, Shifter finished third. Amner finished second. Already it looks bad. In the round before that, Shifter finished first. Amner also finished first. And in the round before that, Shifter finished second. And Amner finished first. So Shifter also cannot beat Amner. Last round. Well, he can at least get, make it cathartic. Because he's going to be against Amner right now. Amner down to 20, 20 health. Shifter on 25. Trying to force their way through. Good damage coming out from the puck. Who's trying to carry these fights. Takes out the lone druid with the extra damage from those arc wardens. And that is a brutal defeat of Amner. Amner takes a big chunk of health off. Going to be down to 5. Again, even if Amna goes out now and Shifter comes first, Shifter cannot come first just due to the fact that they would tie on points. It's looking... Amna's looking rough, though, because if Amna does go down, then suddenly everyone else who is still in the game, except for B and Shifter, can come first. It's just a question of how they finish. I mean, literally, whoever comes first if Amna gets eliminated here, as long as it's not B or Shifter will win. Simple as. Well, not technically simple as. Oh, Jesus Christ, it made me jump. Let's see. Forcing through. Damn on five health, Aegis still in tow. B on 23, Shifter on 25. There's potential for turnaround here. Sniper. With a Mask of Madness. Carry is pretty hard, but it's not enough. People still running that, believing it to be the effective strategy. It still works pretty, pretty well. Alrighty. We are ready. Amnid lost that round, as did pretty much everyone else except for Square B and Sens. Sens has moved into first place. So I have a Vice Daedalus coming out. Black King Bar for Amnid. No second Aegis. Second Aegis would have been definitely very welcome here. Black King Bar going to be placed onto the onto the Venomancer. Extra attack speed for the for the Necrophos. A very strange pickup, but if it works, it works. Tidehunter. Online. Wanderers. Level 3 Windranger. Gonna be and they're gonna be fighting into B. B cannot come first, but can B get the lethartic victory of taking out Amner? They force their way through Amner, though, with the uh, Black King Bard Venomancer summoning those Plague Wards. Trying to fight through, but there's so many things. 
Kings forcing their way through. An Arc Warden for B as well, who has got a Summoning Stone as well. It's just gone for everything that summons. Has got the Venomancer, has the Arc Warden, has the Lyca, even picks up a Nature's Prophet. It just has everything right now. Just running in those summons. And Amner burns the Aegis. Amner is on the back foot. Wanderers knocks Sens down a bit. Sens gets level 2. Jogger finally took it that long. It's been a level 1 since round 1. <laughs> Feels but it's like round 2. Feels bad. Oh, well. Survives. Repositioning happening. This corner strat not working. I like this. Move Enchantress to the corner. Get hooked by Pudge that way. Going to be finding Wanderers. Another Pudge, so this was a smart choice. Oh, Sniper's still on the back line. Sniper's still the hook target. Pudge CC'd. Pudge dies. Sniper going to start getting those shots off. Health regen coming in. Lots of shots coming out. Trying to focus onto the onto the Drow Ranger. But Drow Ranger, Mask of Madness herself, snipes it through. And we say goodbye to Amna. Amna is eliminated. Square. Also looking a little shaky right now. Still alive, though. Down to nine health. B on five health. B cannot win. Shifter cannot win. It is mathematically impossible. Sens and Wondres. They can maybe win. So Amner goes out in sixth place. Total of 13 points. Wondres has four points. If Wondres comes first, Wondres could win. It is possible. It is possible for this to happen. Shifter. Trying to burn through. Good job with the Morphling, but oh my god, so many summons. There's just so much stuff on B's board. Shifter eats a big hit. A lot of health going to be burned here. Any more Aegises in the game? No, there aren't. No Aegises left to protect anyone. Shifter down to five health. Neither of these two can win. They can play spoiler for someone else, though, and they can definitely improve their positionings on the board and look for those second and third place prizes. Alrighty. Level 3 Venomance, level 3 Viper, level 3 Queen of Pain, level 3 Puck, level 3 Razor, level 3 Morphling. It's all over the place. He's got two Arc Wardens just to add more stuff. Is this worth? Is this value? You're going to be fighting into Wanderers. Wanderers needs to win, remember. Finding a clone of Wanderers. See you later, Marana. That's the real one. Goodbye. Oh, no, it wasn't real. I stand corrected. Snipes coming in. Got the Maelstrom. Shifter survives. B. B does not survive. We say goodbye to B Limit Breaker. B Limit Breaker finishes fifth. Grand total of seven points. Not enough. We also lose Square. Oh, snap. Square's gone. Square goes out in fourth. Grand total, same place as last time. Grand total of ten points. Big oof. Alrighty. Well, Shifter cannot win, but Sens and Wanderers can. Sens, second place. We'll put him in 14 points. First place on 17. Wanderers, second place on 11 points, first place on 14. If Wanderers comes second and sends, uh, Wanderers comes first and sends second, that could be insane. Oh crap, I didn't pick up a map. Oh no, it's still map. Oh, we got it. We're good. Top four. Well done, Square. Feels good. 10 points total. Nicely done. Very impressive. Alrighty, we're down to it. Shift could ruin everyone's plans here. If Shift wins. Then the only person who can... If Shift wins this, he gets 13 points. Meaning that if Shift wins... If Shift wins and Wanderers comes second, Shift has ruined everyone's plans. <laughs> and I think Amnes still wins. Oh, man, that could be a thing. Oh, man, that would be brutal. Amne with, as we already mentioned, 13 points. So yeah, Shift could ruin everyone. Shift could come second. <laughs> like push everyone down so Amne would still win. Amne's still the chance of winning. Amne, all of Amne's hopes now lie in the hands of Shift.
Can Shift carry the torch of Omni? Gonna be fighting into Wanderers. Wanderers needs to come first. They're moving in. Viper with the tankiness. Oh, that's a bad hook onto that. Arc Warden forcing their way forward, though. Arc Warden refuses to go down. Another win. Goes in for Shift. Wanderers takes another hit. Oh, man. This is insane. This is insane. He snuck in an Enigma, trading out the Tiny for it as well. Choosing Enigma to be more important than the Arc Warden right now. Sorry, than the, ti than the Tiny. So much value. So much tankiness. Let's have a look at Sens. Finally kills on the axe. 11 kills, 9 kills, 28 kills, 87 kills. Did Nigma just insta kill the 3? I did not see. Quite possibly. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye on the damage numbers here. Gonna be fighting Sens. Alright, there's so much tankiness. Enigma is really important right now. Percentage damage is about to gain value. Teleports in. Midnight Pulse! Oh, he's silenced! He's silenced by Axe! Midnight Pulse comes out, but it only has a Shadow Feed! Shadow Feed moves out of it! And then we got bamboozled! And that's gonna be Sen's deleting Shift! Shift is down. Shift is eliminated. The hope of Amne coming first, eliminated with him. Because now, no matter who comes first, Wonder has one health! No matter who comes first out of these two, they will be going home in first place. If Sens wins, 17 points. If Wanderers wins, Wanderers gets 14 points. He will be tied with Sens, and then it will be a battle to see who has the highest score. It's all down to this moment right now. If Sens wins, it's all over. If Wanderers wins, we go to score counting. Can Wanderers take it down? He's going to win so many in a row. Moving forward. There's a Medusa on the board. Gets Ravaged and immediately disrupts a second Ravage with the with the Refresher Orb. There's the hook onto Drown Ranger. So much damage coming out. They got the Stone Gaze, but it's not enough. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion for cup number three is going to be Sens96. With 17 points, Sens will be taking the final and he will be your champion for the ESL free-for-all opening cup number three for Europe. Huge congratulations to Sens. He will take first place. In second place, I am pretty sure it is safe to say it will be Amnet with 13 points. In third place, a valiant effort. But on 11 points, it will be Wondrez. Try to tank it through. Still gets top three. I'm pretty sure in fourth place, it will be square. Nicely done, everybody. Games are over. What a final. That was intense at the end there. It came down to a bit sense. A second and a first place position, getting a solid 17 points. A very secure victory in this grand final. Very nicely done. We'll wait for the scores to come out once again, but then we will be off for the night. I have 69 views. Nice. Let's keep an eye let's wait for those scores to update so that we can, can properly and officially congratulate our winners. But Sens, grats man, I saw you in the chat earlier. I don't know if you're still here, but huge congratulations. There is no way you haven't won, because math. So really good job. Congratulations, and everyone, thank you for watching. Episode uh, number three of the ESL opening cups. Feels good. Exactly. GG Dab! Feels good. <laughs> I should never do that again. Alrighty. Waiting for the scores to be input. But Sens is the winner. Congratulations. We know that for a fact. So yeah, I'm pretty sure if my math is correct, it is Sens, uh, Amner, and then Wanderers. I'm pretty sure that is the final score. Shifter got third place, so he's 10. as w He got 9, I think. Okay. I think that's the final score if my... Bra math this is correct, which almost certainly isn't. It almost never is. So, yeah, we'll see. Just waiting for the results to be put in, and then we are ready to go. And I'll find someone to raid for you guys to continue enjoying and keep that train going. Our admin is gone, so I don't even know if I'll actually get the results in. I'm hoping someone's taken over from them. But nice one! Sens! 96! 17 points, you are the victor! Yeah, do we have an admin put against scores? Because our admin appears to be offline. <laughs> no.
There we go. We got it. They didn't put in the overall scores. Rankings. Match two close. There we go. We got it. We got it. Back it up. Boom. Alrighty. So, yeah, I was correct. So, ladies and gentlemen, the final results in last place, not even knowing the cup was on. Unfortunately, he didn't realize he made it through because someone dropped out. It is Zytrax, but still eighth place in the grand final without playing. Not bad. We have B Limit Breaker in, in seventh place on six points. Babalika, eight points. Shifter, what a valiant effort. Primordials all the way to the end on nine points. Square. Consistent fourth place finishes, solid 10 points at the end. Wanderers, a wonderful comeback, but not enough to carry through in third place with 11 points. Amne, first place, but then getting knocked out a little early on 13 points. A beautiful seventh, second place finish. Well done to you. But the champion for cup number three is Sens96 with a second and a first place finish with 17 points. Well done and congratulations to you. Thank you all everyone very much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed. I'm going to find someone to raid. I hope you've had a wonderful day. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Be sure to follow the stream if you have enjoyed yourself. Subscribe and donate to keep me in food, which means I can keep casting. Every tiny little thing helps because it's all money. It all helps me keep casting. It all helps me keep working. And we really do, us casters really do only survive until we start getting offline events for Underlords. We only survive off of your generosity. So thank you very much for that. But for now, everyone, I have been Tetcher. I have been your caster for today. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all next Sunday for more Underlords action or during the week for more of my personal streams. Thank you all very much and see you all next time. Bye. Realize I can't change the screen when I'm on this overlay. Whoops! Bye!